Back to another video guys and we are doing power rule proofs. I'll give you a quick proof for that but before we're doing it in a general way I'll just show you how it works for a specified case. For example if your function fx equals x to the power 0 literally just say it's 1 so if you take f prime or dy dx df dx no matter which notation you use you'll get 0 because c uh, in this case equals 1 and this is the constant so using the previous rule you can definitely know that so fx let's say x to the power 1 so in other words just x if you take f prime from that you'll get 1 times x to the power 0 literal say just 1 okay that's you might notice from the differentiation from the first principles okay if you have fx equals x squared you'll notice again from differentiation from first principle that's it's 2x to the power 1 or literally say it's 2x and finally let's test the next one x cubed if you try to take the derivative you'll get 3x squared okay so you notice that we always have the factor before which is in this case 1 that here is 2 here is 3 and we have specific power in this case power 0 in this case 1 and this case is 2 let's correspond the powers to what you had originally so that's power rule so that's why it referred to general form of the function fx equals x to the power of n and that means that if you try to take derivative you'll have the, 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 the specific structure for that so this power n goes before and x will take the power one less than the previous one so that's why the general rule is going to be n to times x to the power n minus one okay but this is sort of okay uh who knows we just cover only limited case of examples but how to prove it generally all right no problem you'd remember just from the first principle you can use the following so f prime from x is going to be f x plus h so that's why you plug the argument raised to the power of n and you take away just your normal function x to the power of n over h and taking the limits as you remember when h is very small in the case that your function fx is simply x to the power of n I'm taking the general case okay so right now before we do that we need to expand those power n and this is binomial right just remember the formula for binomial a plus b to the power of n this is binomial expansion for general case you will use those c coefficients and choose r where r goes from 0 to n and the first term will take the power n minus r and the second term b will take the power r okay so that's why if you try to expand this and makes like more general you'll get something like n choose 0 a to the power of n okay next n 1 a to the power of n minus 1 and b takes power 1 okay it goes on and on until you reach the last term which in this case is going to be n choose n okay and finally you'll get a to the power n minus n which is zero and finally you're left with b to the power of r okay so that's the g sorry uh b to the power of n so that's the general uh way how you can expand let's apply to our case x plus h to the power of n let's do that so f prime from x is going to be limit when h is very close to zero and now i just apply this polynomial okay i'll get n zero x to the power of n i just rewrite the structure so plus n choose one x will get the power n minus one and b instead of b we have h in our case so that's why h and plus finally then it's going to be increasing power of h 
like h squared, h cubed. And finally, what we'll get, we'll get n choose n. So here is going to be h to the power of n. And there is no x because x literally say in the power of 0. Okay, we've done that. And now, I squeeze a little bit. And now, we need to take away the, this x to the power of n. So we're taking away x to the power of n and we're dividing everything by h. But hold on. If we calculate n 0, so just remember how to calculate generally n r. This is the formula for this coefficient n factorial. This is combinations, right? So that's why over r factorial, n minus r factorial. So in this case, n choose 0, you can press the calculator button and it will give you n factorial over n factorial, okay? Over n factorial, that means the result is 1, okay? Because 0 factorial is always, so 0 factorial is always 1. So make sure you remember that. Okay, I'll expand a little bit and the next one. So that means finally we've left with x to the power of n. So if we start rewriting this formula next, we'll definitely get a following. So f prime from x is going to be equal. So limit h is very small. We have the fraction x to the power of n and minus x to the power of n will be cancelled. Okay. So you can raise those x to the power n due to the fact that n zero is going to be n choose one n choose zero is going to be one. So that's why that will cancel automatically, and you're left with the following. So n choose one. Let's calculate that. So c n one is going to be equal n factorial over 1 factorial, which is 1, and n minus 1 factorial, okay? If you cancel that, because n factorial is, is going to be n times n minus 1 and up to infinity, so you can rewrite as n times n minus 1 factorial, not to infinity, but to 1, sorry, and over n minus 1 factorial. So that's why you're simply left with n. Okay, so that will give you n. And that's why the first coefficient n choose 1 will be simply n. Okay, we'll get n x n minus 1. And hold on, because we cancel everything, right? It's going to be h. That's going to be next term, for example, n choose 2 x to the power n minus 2 h squared and so on. Okay. That what we'll actually have here. And if we divide finally by h, we'll get a following. So I'm just trying to highlight this. And you'll see that finally, in this case, we'll get that f prime from x. We divided everything by h. That's why we'll have and x and minus 1 and everywhere we just have the same terms that you had before in numerator however the powers for h is going to be one less so everywhere and we'll get now the coefficient and choose 3 x to the power n minus 3 h squared and so on okay until you arrive to the last one which is simply still have h to the power of n minus 1, okay? n minus 1 with some coefficients. Okay, but it doesn't matter because now we are taking the limit. So before that, we need to put the limit when h is very small. So that's why the limit from this whole expression simply means that you are left with only this first term. So that's why the answer to the answer or resultant expression is going to be n x n minus 1. And let's compare that what we are supposed to prove. So we are supposed to prove that 
the prime derivative of x to the power of n is n x n minus 1. For n from q means from n being a rational number. And we proved that because derivative is going to be n times x n minus 1. So here is the proof. Make sure you understand how binomial expansion works because actually I use it here. Okay, And of course you need to be aware of differentiation from first principles. That's pretty easy. Maybe a bit longer, but that's the proof. That's the original proof. That was Daniel Dallas. See you in the next video about constant multiples. All right.